<laughs> it's right. to myself mainly. Are you are you ready? I am. Yeah. Well, wow. I've what we've been put on the spot. Hi everyone. <laughs> Now, there's just there's just a couple of ladies who couldn't come this evening. Okay. Okay, so they've sent a review through. Oh, that's so sweet of them. So I just thought we'd start with them first. Okay. And then, all right? Okay, so. Sorry again not to be able to come tonight. Here are a few words. This gene is outside of both our comfort zones, and so it is a little hard to compare with other similar novels. Okay. However, after a gentle lead-in, the narrative picks up at a great taste and gusto. Descriptions of the different characters were detailed and you could easily envisage their appearance. Oh, fantastic. Battles were exciting and quite gripping, especially as the story progressed, but not too bloodthirsty. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sadly, as we had decided to download it onto the Kindle, Jennifer found it more difficult to keep abreast of the characters as she used, she's used to reading paper. We are both very interested to know how Dan came up with all his ideas, oh, what, pro, what prompted him to start, and what other literature does he enjoy? Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> Questions. Oh, thank God. It's lovely. So we've got an answer to that in a moment. Okay. No <laughs> <laughs> I start making notes. As we won't be part of tonight's discussion, we would like to hear what everyone else thought about the book and also what the next book is. Well, that's also a good reason why I'm recording this, actually. So I can always send down audio files if they want them. Yes, that's a good idea. I hope, yeah, I hope you don't mind too much. I'm, I'm a podcaster and I've actually started a podcast and I'm having this as one of them. <laughs> I expect you had a little inkling there, didn't you? He uses anything. Well, wow. anyway, um, so anyway, do you want to answer those questions now? Oh, well, go on then. Yeah, yes. Let's start with the first one. What was the first one? We are both very interested to know how Dan came up with all his ideas. Oh, where to start? What prompted him? <laughs> what prompted him? to start and what other literature does he enjoy okay well i i'm actually looking forward to this right well the first one as i'm sure you've read in the description this all started with a stick and it's no lie no lie it, actually that stick is sitting in the garden unless dad's throwing it in the bin <laughs> <laughs> may have burned it you never know <laughs> <laughs> well that is it. it it literally started as um me and a friend um he's actually gone on to write his own book now uh, we got chatting years and years ago, uh, back in 2004, something like that. We discussed that uh, we'd love it if we could make a film about Lord, like Lord of the Rings style. It was our, it was a huge thing. We love fantasy, and um, they uh, we he went to a college at the time. He was doing a media studies course, and he said, "I need a five minute film." And we came up with all these ideas. We went down to recall, started drawing pictures, what we'd have, what kind of style it would be. And it started off with a simple title, Attack of the Goblin Horde. And this sparked many ideas of uh, goblins attacking the beach of Rakova. And uh, it was mainly just a battle. Uh, and uh, he, uh, Tom went away and said, uh, we should make our characters. We should think of these characters. And uh, that's why I started creating this this little boy who uh he had, the original plan was because this this film was going to start us uh we would never grow up we the idea would be the spell there was a spell cast and these children who were to be great fighters but children nonetheless but over time uh my character started getting deeper and deeper and uh he, he was just a great archer a very good archer and uh i called him druin and uh Light Blazer literally came from um, the uh, what was it? It was um, it was an article in the paper actually. I think it was literally uh, the sun caused a forest fire, and so I was, it, it literally came out of that Light Blazer, and I liked it. And um, so it wasn't really the character wasn't really the name wasn't based on the character. It just came out of things really, and um, no, but that's where the base of the story started. Um, 
this Druin light blazer was going to assist in this attack to defend the shores of originally Ardania, but after discovering that was an actual place in a game, I had to change the title to, uh, to the Kingdom of Tharlian. And um, it was that that uh, I started wanting to know why my character's becoming evil. Because after a while, Druin became getting darker and darker and darker. He became the character that you wouldn't want to meet, really. He came into a character where he was sort of... Don't get on the wrong side of him, because he will put an arrow through your head. And I wanted to know why. I wanted to know why Druin was a bit of a dick. And um, that's where I started developing his story, how he started off in this little village. He's, a, he's away from everything. They literally start in the village, they grow into their tr um, professions, and they stay there. They don't really know what happens, or what happens in the capital city. Um, so he was just a village boy. And then it was attacked. And I wanted to know why he would become so great after this simple attack. And then he finds out, obviously, his mother did something special for the kingdom. And it was his duty to take her role. And from there, it just blossomed. Just, And that was where Morrison's came in handy, actually, my job. Because I, it was such a monotonous job. Stacking shelves, I could just disappear into my imagination for hours. And it was fantastic. And from that, I just came up with this, uh, that. Yeah. So that... Oh, yeah. oh, thank you so much. <laughs> But yeah, that was it, that was it. That's where it all blossomed from, really. And then simply playing in the back garden with a stick. And so it was basically born out of these fights I was having with imaginary things. And then I'd turn around and there's Dad going... <laughs> um, and uh, but that was it, these imaginary fights. And then it was like learning what was between A and C. What's between C and uh, E. And it just developed from there, really. And the other question was, what other literature do you enjoy? Oh, right. Right, well, that's, that's uh, simple, because uh, um, probably, as you could probably read, I'm not a writer. I never intended to be a writer. I had no interest in it. But um, uh, I, it was just this story. I had to get it down. I knew it had to be on paper, so I had to start reading. And it was actually when I first started taking an interest in reading. So I decided I wanted to, I, I loved the Da Vinci Code. So Dan Brown's books were on the menu, read all of them. Uh, I wanted to understand the hype about Twilight, so I read through all of Stephanie Myers, and uh, and recently the Harry Potters. Wow, what a bunch of books they are! Um, Lord of the Rings, anything outrageous. I think I want. I'd like to think that uh, I'm taking a bit of everything into my books because I like the, the the thriller, the crime thriller of the Dan Brown books, the mystery. The, the, the quest for no more knowledge. I like that. And that's where Divine Victory came from. Um, I like, uh, obviously, the, 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 the greatness, the magnitude of the Harry Potters, of the Lord of the Rings. That's where they came from. Um, so where loves... did Shades of Grey come in there? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for book five. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. No, that'd be horrible. Oh, no, um, but the love story, you're going to find out, if you if you read the second one, you'll realise that this story, above all else, is a love story between two characters. Druin, and it's not it Emily. Oh, no, I didn't just... think it would be. <laughs> You've met, you have met the character briefly. I thought yeah. possibly. And if you guess her, then I will give you a free copy of that book. If right. I, you've met the girl. I guess it's she. Me too. Really? Yeah. That's a nice idea, but no. no. <laughs> no I'll let you keep guessing. I don't remember the girl's name now. Um, oh, is she it's the one that interested in Drew and it, she asked him about it? Uh, about him. him. <laughs> is she just. Yeah. <laughs> Are you thinking of Nathanie? Yes. yes. Well, I'll send you a, make sure once the second one's done, you're getting a free copy. Oh, take a note. <laughs> and Mum, take a note of that because I'm being genuinely serious. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I was interested in, 
you make some of your characters able to fight well, like yes. Ruin, and some of them are magical. Yes. Obviously, which I love that actually. It's like Harry Potter, obviously, is magical. Yeah. Like I'm. Uh, a... I really liked that, but I'm half wondering whether Bruins are going to have any magical. Well, technically. There's Warren's his father. Yes. What did you think of that twist? Did you see it coming? I did, I did actually. <laughs> That's cool. Not for, oh, not for quite some time, but it did, yeah, I kept thinking, especially once Warren did the, the lesson. Yes. Sort of thing, um, yes, he showed a sign of almost uh, weakness there. Although what I like about him is he is a, he is a weak character. Yeah, I like Warren, actually. Mm. I've heard quite a few people say they like Warren, and I do like that because I'd hate the idea that everyone liked the same character. Because to be honest, actually, Druin's becoming my least favourite. Why? <laughs> <laughs> like, because I know him so well. Um, but no, he's he's. Um, I've given each character, each main character has a certain quality. Um, as you'll discover, as you know, there's three main characters trying to find each other. Well, actually, two of them have found each other, haven't they? Druin and Reeflick. And uh, I apologise if you struggle with it, being the pronunciation of any of the names. <laughs> yes, that was, that was, a, that was a difficulty. Yes. Mm -hmm. We were saying it was a shame that you have gone to the trouble of making a map or drawing a map that that wasn't included. I in know. The yeah, model. it was a shame. When they said they wanted it, it li they literally gave me a gap of uh, half a day to get it in or miss the chance, and I missed it. So I'm making sure, making very sure that number two has the the uh, the map in because yeah. Well, the thing is, each map will expand because, as you know, there's a war between these three kingdoms, and um, there's about the, and it's going to be constantly changing. I want to be the first author to have a map that's not just that. Each story, you're going to see the map slowly deteriorate or expand eventually down to the final one where I'm for, um, uh, it's all going to collapse well I'm gonna I'm gonna reveal something to you that I'm not too bothered about um, mentioning so you can give a little idea of what's to come you've got light blazer number one number two Rise of the Mysterium Crusade. Number three, between hordes, between hordes, between hordes and heroes, which is actually the original basis of Attack of the Goblin Horde. Um, number four, A Queen of Shadows. Number five uh, was uh, Traitors and Masters. Number six, A Fear of Factions. And the final one, the breaking. Mm. Well, I hope so. I, I'm really, really relieved that uh, you. you oh, I hope you're liking it. Yeah. I hope it's something you can enjoy. It's, I, I was saying to uh, the others, I found it difficult to get into Dan. Yeah. And once I got into it, um, it took me a while. Then I became really um, intrigued and. In became gripping for me with the battles and uh, people fighting against each other and the good and the evil and also as you say Drew and developing his character developing yes so, I think probably it took me a while to get in the names were difficult uh, in a you know World of Warcraft type person yes <laughs> and uh, um, second half I found flowed Better for me. Oh, brilliant! That's good. Well, it just, it just goes to show it might that might have been the uh, the gap between because uh, there was obviously a, a section where I was writing it down in that house where my mm -hmm. concentration was very limited because there was too many distractions, um, and also I was still finding my voice really. And then up here, where I guess I I must have had more time to do, to develop and understand. Um, I didn't feel I was writing chapter by chapter. I knew the story, and so I could just flow straight through. So that amazed. definitely will help. That's, uh, I'm amazed at how you managed to write this novel and get everything down, considering all the 
long, maybe more time up there. I'm not sure. You've got two children. You've got a job. You've got a home to, you know, to sort out. I'm, I admire you for getting more oh, done. thank you. Uh, um, it's, well, I, I think, as, however much my wife has to listen to me complain about sleep, I try, we try and make sure sleep is our least priority, however much we get. <laughs> Still young, you can do that. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's, it's one of those things where sometimes I will take the opportunity to write what I can down. Um, I do waste a lot of time where I could be spending it with the family, but I'm there. I'm just writing. Um, but there's other times where um, I will be able to find one evening where I've got it completely free and think, I've got to get this down. And I, they're the ones I like. Bucks. Oh, right. Starbucks is just around the corner. Yes. Right. Take yourself off that to is, Starbucks. Yeah, no, no, yeah exactly. That's a perfect example, yeah. It really worked. It really worked. It worked for JK and it's working for me. Well, In the couple. Sorry, Sorry, go on. Explain to us how it is that you're able to... <laughs> if there's too much noise on this end. No, you're fine. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, so that's lovely to hear. That's lovely to hear. Um, I, it's, it's interesting because really the best way to describe it more than anything is I, more than being the writer of Drew and Light Blazer, I am Drew and Light Blazer. He is everything I've always wanted to be. He's everything that I have never was. He's, he's he can be irrational. He can be impulsive. Um, he he embellishes a part of me, most definitely, and that could be why this is my intrigue to the world. I don't I don't fully understand it. I I'm, I guess I'm learning with him. Um, and uh, and yeah, I I think that's an important thing. We all have to remember the innocence of a child who's been told, <laughs> you know, mate, you've got to be one of the best fighters in the world, otherwise. A buggered, and uh, so I guess I like the idea, the fact that he he's got this inevitability. Either he gets he gets good quick, or the entire kingdom suffers, and he doesn't quite understand that this is serious stuff. And um, when I hope that the other characters along the way help him uh, learn, and I guess uh, well they do, but uh, what I'm looking forward to is. Uh, how he reacts to what yet to come. Can he face it? Maybe. Will he stand for it? Maybe not. Um, I personally have to say in the first book, my char favourite character has to be Drago. Smart ass. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm interested.